Hi, it's Danielle from the blog warmwithtime.com where I help you design a home full of vintage charm. And in today's video, I want to share with you how I transformed this vintage vanity into two separate nightstands. I've done this project a couple of times now on different vanities that I've picked up over the years. We have a set of these nightstands similar to this in my bedroom. My parents also wanted their own set and I've sold a couple over the years. I think that these vintage vanities make the perfect nightstands because of these vintage vanities with the drop down in the center, I'll put a picture here, these um, really serve no purpose anymore. A lot of people don't have a separate space in their home for a vanity to put on makeup. And for that reason, I can usually find them for pretty cheap on Facebook Marketplace. What I love most about this project is that the dip down vanity makes the perfect nightstand. Not only is this project super easy to actually separate and turn into two nightstands, but also the nightstand sizes themselves are perfect. They're a great size that gives you tall skinny nightstands with added storage. Plus they are slim and fit into even the most tightest spaces. And so when I saw another set on Facebook Marketplace, I couldn't help pick it up so I can share this project with you in hopes that this will inspire you to create your own set of vintage nightstands. So if you're interested in seeing how I did this transformation, then just go ahead and keep on watching. So I picked this vanity up from Facebook Marketplace and I paid $50 for it which I thought was a good price because I know that it's gonna make an amazing set of nightstands. I've made a couple of nightstands from different vanities in the past, and every time I do a project like this from a vintage vanity into nightstands, I find that all of these vanities are built a little bit differently, and sometimes the deconstructing process or the separation is a little bit different with each vanity. So this is my husband. He actually helped me with the beginning part of this project while I was working on some other things. So to separate this particular vanity, he just removed the screws that held the back supports in so that the mirror in the back could be separately removed from the vanity. And then once the mirror was removed, he just took a rubber mallet and gently tapped on the center section so that it completely came apart. And those center sections were very easy to remove, just took a couple of taps because they're really mostly just put together with a couple of dowels. And then once he got the top center section off, then he just laid the piece all the way down so that he could tap from the underneath to try to get the middle section out. And while he was doing that, he noticed that it had this extra piece here for stability. Um, so you could lay heavier things on that center part of the vanity. So he had to actually pry those off first so that he could then get the center section removed. And just like that, the vanity was separated and now we have two nightstands. However, from the side, you can tell that there was some holes where the center section was attached and held the two vanities together. So we're going to show you in the next clip how we actually made a couple of wooden pieces to fill those gaps so that we didn't have an opening. So my husband just took his chop saw and cut a couple of pieces of wood, just scrap wood that we had laying around. And he cut off a section that was the length of the hole that we needed to fill and rather than trying to measure with a ruler the exact width of the gap that we need to fill he just laid the piece of wood cut to length up to the hole and traced it to get a more precise estimate and then he just cut it with his table saw and then once those pieces were cut then he just put a little bit of glue on it and tacked it in place while the glue dried with a nail gun. The next thing I need to do with these nightstands is handle all of this latex paint. This paint job, whoever painted this before me, did a very poor job. There was lots of drips and runs all over the place. And if you've ever sanded latex paint, 
Let me tell you, it is not fun. Latex paint is horrible for furniture because if you ever need to remove it, it gums up and is a pain in the butt to remove. What I planned on doing was just sanding the top lightly so that I could eventually paint it. I My goal here was really just to get all the drips and runs that you saw earlier off. And as I was sanding, I revealed the most beautiful wood underneath. So I thought, why not just go ahead with that and sand all of the latex paint off the top and off the back supports as well. And I used my orbital detail sander to do this. And I used a 60 grit at first to really get in there and remove the latex paint. And then later I went back with a 120, also a 200 grit. And if you've made it this far and you're really enjoying this video, be sure to like it down below. And consider subscribing to see more vintage furniture makeovers here on my channel. Alright, so once I had all of the drips and runs removed from the outside of the piece, then I just needed to go in with my Bondo putty. I use this stuff all the time for any crack or crevice or gouge I need to fill. This stuff is awesome, and so I use it on almost every project. So I'm smearing it over the wood piece that we added to the nightstands just to make the transition between the two pieces of wood a little bit more seamless. And that way when I paint it, it will be virtually undetectable that there was even an additional piece added. And one thing that's really awesome about Bondo, one reason I love to use it is because not only does it dry super hard, but it also dries within 5 to 15 minutes. So I can go ahead and get it sanded and get it ready for paint all in the same day. So because the nightstands were painted with a white leg text paint, I knew that I needed to choose a milk paint color that would kind of complement the white underneath because there is a possibility that it could chip or crack. And so I chose to go with this a toffee slash mushroom color by Sweet Pickens and the color is called Proper. Another reason that I chose this color is that I thought that it would make a very good neutral in any bedroom no matter what decor style you have. You cannot go wrong with this color. So I'm just using a Zebra Synthetic Brush, my go-to brush to apply the milk paint. And you can see the first coat of milk paint is looking pretty streaky and splotchy. That's totally normal, especially because of the finished surface that I'm working with. If my vanity was solid wood without any paint, it would have soaked more evenly through. But because I have areas of raw wood, areas of Bondo, and areas of latex paint, the paint is gonna look very splotchy due to those different surfaces. So when I came back to check out my second coat, I noticed that the entire piece was extremely crackly. I had a very distinct crackle finish. So I was very glad that I chose a milk paint color that complemented that white paint underneath. And I would probably have not gotten this crackle finish if I would have added Bond to my first coat of milk paint. I would have normally added it because the crackle finish was really not what I was looking for, but I was out of it when I first painted the piece and I just wanted to get the project done, so I went ahead and took my chances. Once my second coat was fully dry, I actually kind of liked the crackle finish. I thought it was really unique and I loved how it was very consistent throughout so it looked really cool and so then I went ahead and chose to seal it I don't normally seal with a paste wax but in this case I was worried that some of the milk paint would chip off if I chose to seal the piece with a liquid sealer so I played it safe and used this Johnson paste wax that I had on hand one thing I love about this wax is that it's very affordable. I think it's only $10 at Lowe's and it's readily available so anytime I feel like I need a new bottle I can just go pick it up at the store. One thing to note about this paste wax though, if you're painting a piece that's white it will kind of leave a 
yellowish tint so you really need to make sure you rub it in well and the last step is to go ahead and just add all the finishing touches so I'm adding back on the new knobs that I picked up I love these vintage porcelain knobs I think that the white porcelain just pairs super well with the latex paint underneath and I'm super glad that I picked these ones up I love how they look on the piece And then I went ahead and added the back supports back on just to hide that gap that's there in the back. And then they're all done. I really love how these nightstands came out. I think that the toffee mushroom color is amazing it's perfect for any bedroom decor and I think that the crackle finish is so unique I've never gotten a this much crackle all over pieces before and I love how the white porcelain knobs pair with that crackle it's really unique let me know in the comments do you like this crackle finish is this a piece that you would put in your room I would love to know down below I hope you enjoyed seeing the transformation of these vanity nightstands in hopes that you can find a vanity to create your own nightstands as well. It's important to remember that sometimes when you're using milk paint, you're not always going to get 100% of what you're expecting. It really just depends on the surface that you're painting on and sometimes you just don't know going in. And while that does seem a little bit scary at first, if you actually embrace the spontaneity that is milk paint, you can create some of the most beautiful and unique looks ever. I bet you if I got very similar nightstands and tried to recreate this look, I would probably not succeed because every project is different. And when it comes to milk paint, sometimes the beauty is in the imperfections. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.